Hello and welcome to what AQA promises is the final update to the 2021 English Literature Exam. And it is mostly good news. So let's check out what Paper 1 now looks like. So there are two papers you must sit in Paper 1 out of a choice of three. The first part of the paper, Paper 1A, you answer one question on poetry. So you choose whether it's the love and relationships or the power and conflict. However, you don't have to choose that one, but that is your first option. And you get 50 minutes to do the essay, which is slightly longer than you would have had in the old exam, where you would have had 45 minutes. So five minutes of extra time, brilliant. Or you get the option of doing paper 1B. And this involves answering one question on the 19th century novel of your choice. This is also 30 marks and you also get 50 minutes, which is five minutes longer than the old paper. Or you can choose not to do that and choose the next option, paper 1C, which is the modern prose or drama text of your choice. Again, worth 30 marks and it lasts for 50 minutes. You get that extra five minutes. So what do you have to pay back to the examiner to make up for those extra five minutes of time? This is where it starts to look slightly different from a normal exam. To explain that, let's look at the changes to the exam structure. So paper one, those options of part A, part B and part C. Paper one contains the optional components, poetry anthology, 19th century novel and modern prose drama. You only have to do two of those in two 50 minute sessions. This is where it gets a bit weird because you don't sit those as separate exams. You sit them at the same time with a break in between under exam conditions. Now schools won't know yet because they haven't run an exam like this, whether they're going to get you all out of the exam hall and then back in or to keep you in the exam hall. The instruction that the break has to be under exam conditions suggests that nearly every school in the country is going to keep you in the exam hall until you've finished your paper, the 50 minutes worth, and then they'll give you your final paper. Now, obviously, that means you will have decided which papers to do in advance. You won't be able to make up your mind just going into the exam. You'll have to know in advance which questions you're going to answer. Each option will be provided as a separate question paper booklet with a separate answer booklet. Now, this is an instruction for the school, which is very interesting for you. You may choose for all students to do the same option or decide that different students can do different options. Most schools will look at the paperwork required here and try to get everybody in the year group to do the same options. That also makes teaching much easier. So. If you find that your school has dropped a text that you really, really want to do, you're going to have to do a massive persuasion job. And as I showed you in my previous update video, the best way to persuade a teacher to let you sit a question paper that they're not teaching to the whole class is to do some past exam paper questions, show them to your teacher so they can see how well you're doing. The good news for you is that the school only have to indicate which options students are taking at the point of entry. So in theory, they could change their minds right up until the morning of the test. Now, I can't think of a school that would actually do that, but you certainly have, you know, up to a few weeks before the actual test to persuade your teachers that you need to do particular texts or not. You can just do the ones that your school's doing with everybody. Now we come to paper two, which is compulsory. So you have to answer all the questions. The first section, section A, will be on the Shakespeare play that you've studied. Then section B, which is also compulsory, will be the unseen poem. Notice that the marks for spelling, punctuation and grammar are now with that poetry question and with the Shakespeare question. So that's the exam paper where you really need to spend a little bit of time making sure you're accurate 
in your punctuation, spelling and grammar. Because that's going to give you eight extra marks on the paper, that's quite a big deal. Once you've written about that unseen poem, you then have a comparison question where you're given a new unseen poem to compare it to. This is always a Mickey Mouse question because it only carries eight marks. It's barely worth doing in some ways. And yet because it's a comparison, students usually end up writing much too much for this one and not enough for the one on the unseen poem on its own, which counts for three times as many marks. Please don't let that be you. Put a massive effort into this one. And here, even a bad answer is still going to get you four marks. And a brilliant answer will probably only get you six marks. So if there's any kind of wiggle room in your exam, put your money into this question and less so into this one. But obviously, you'd like to get both done. The good news is that this paper is only one hour and 45 minutes long, so you won't run out of energy. The bad news is that even those students who aren't very good in the exam won't run out of energy, and so their mark difference might not be as great as in previous years. Notice that this paper carries 70 marks, where the previous paper one only carried 60. So what that means is that paper one now counts for 46% of your total marks, but paper two counts for 54%, and a lot of that is because of your spelling, punctuation and grammar, which is why you really need to... Well, they're free marks, aren't they? So sort that out for paper two. Now, I normally get a quite a few questions I hadn't anticipated with one of these videos, and AQA has given a checklist of the things that are going to stay the same. So the style and format of the questions haven't changed. So you can still do past paper questions as your revision. Shakespeare and the Unseen Poetry are compulsory. The choice of texts available for each component remains the same, so everything you've studied is going to be potentially tested. The number of marks for each question is exactly the same as it was before. The only thing that's changed was the spelling, punctuation and grammar marks, which you saw are different now on paper two. And good news, the mark scheme's going to be the same, so you're going to be judged in the same way as students in the past, and as you were in your year 10 mocks and so on. Now, if you want to do brilliantly in the poetry, then check out the top left here, a video will be appearing. And if you want to do brilliantly in the Macbeth, another video will be appearing here. See you soon on my channel.